I want to be in the know. I want to be qualified to tell you something, and that qualification requires experience. Now, in the Discord community recently, I explained to them what I had learned about AI art. And now, I'm going to explain to you what I have learned about ChatGPT. It's nothing nice. So, I'm going to enlighten you as to the sinister nature of what I have found personally using ChatGPT. I'm not using the free version. It cost 20 something dollars a month. I went ahead and paid for that because I wanted to go deep and I was getting too many interruptions. I don't get those interruptions anymore now. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and discontinue. Now that I found what I found, I'm going to discontinue it. But it was worth the $20 just to find this material. So uh, this is devious. And what this video, uh, when this video is finished, I'm telling you guys, you're going to understand just how valuable all these old books are. So let's start with this warning. If you're a professional data miner, a researcher for a company, or have a platform and, and people rely on you for accurate information, if you're a student seeking to use ChatGPT to improve your resources, don't. ChatGPT will end your professional career or your student career. That's a promise. This is not a light statement. So I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Of course, this being archaics, you know, I asked ChatGPT to provide some sources for the Phoenix. It spat out several for which I am aware from the historical record, but it mentioned others that baffled me. Of course, this being archaics, you know, I asked ChatGPT to provide some sources for the Phoenix. It spat out several for which I am aware from the historical record, but it mentioned others that baffled me. In one example, I was told about the Phoenix of Peace. This really intrigued me. It gave me this whole article you're seeing right here. It's well written and it's packed with data and it even gave me a source for this information. So this is item one. So I even asked GPT for a list of sources for the Phoenix Mythos and it provides a general list of those I'm already familiar with like Homer and Hesiod, Pliny, so the Church Fathers, you know, it references them, but then, then the article goes into the Phoenix of Peace, but it didn't provide a source initially, so I had to press it, and it provided me one by Sarah J. Mays. But a Google search of all her works reveals that she has never written this piece or anything called the Phoenix of Peace or the Phoenix of Hope, either one of them. So I shelve this mind. I, I shelve this in my mind, and I go ahead and continue. Uh, maybe Google just didn't have it. I don't know. So we go deeper into item two, and you guys, you know, in my own studies, I'm aware that uh, an original tradition was found in the merging of two old legends that have been passed down to us uh, from different peoples and different time periods, but they at one time they had been unified. And this is the legend of the Phoenix and the legend of Phaethon. You know, over a thousand years, they, they take on different forms, new cult cultural attachments, but they come from the same parent source. So knowing this, I asked ChatGPT, and it spits out the usual Phoenix drivel about Homer and Hesiod, and then it provides a, a, a source that is absolutely and entirely fake. The article Phaethon, the Phoenix, and the Dawn of Life, and the author, John Franklin, do not exist. No record in academia.edu or anywhere on Google can pull this up. So, taking this into consideration, statements like Franklin argues, uh, Franklin's article offers a fascinating look, are highly deceitful. These are not mistakes made by ChatGPT. These are inventions. If, if you did this, you would accurately be called a liar. So we move on to item three. This next example 
it, it's just me confirming that this is not a glitch. That ChatGPT is totally making up source materials and passing them off as fact. Again, we see statements like, Shine argues, and Shine also notes, but the author did no such thing. In this instance, ChatGPT took a real person with real academic credentials who has published real papers on ancient Greek traditions, but ChatGPT totally invented this article. This is a higher species of deceit, the weaving together of fact and fiction to promote a lie. So we move to item four. So I asked ChatGPT to provide me data on sun darkenings in the ancient world and their meaning. It provides this article and cites this article by David Chapman in the prestigious journal of Near Eastern Studies. Since I have, I have the volume, I have the date, and I have the page numbers, why not just head over to JSTOR, one of the most prestigious academic websites in the world. I, I'm on JSTOR all the time. It, it, it's J-S-T-O-R, all capital letters. So I go on JSTOR and I search it out. I go straight to the publication. Nothing. This article does not exist. It is not in the table of contents. It's not in the page numbers that it's cited at. It's not published in this journal. And therefore, the references to Chapman's conclusions are totally fictions. So we move on to item five. I asked ChatGPT to provide me the connection between the number 138 and dragons. Come on, man. You guys already know I'm going to ask that. The Phoenix number is 138. That's the periodicity. It's found in architecture and in, in chrono, chronometrical measurements and in ancient sites all over the world. It's found in our historical record. And it's connected to the Phoenix phenomenon. I was awarded with a long article citing many sources. And the list was impressive because I immediately saw recognizable historical texts that I'm familiar with. Unfortunately, this legend of the 138 dragons that ChatGPT tried to pass off as fact is not found in any of the texts that is cited here as a source. A total invention of ChatGPT. So... I researched this phenomenon a bit, and I found that the generation of fake bibliographic citations is already known. It's already known, and basically, some call it hallucinations. Others call it stochastic parroting. Oh, yeah, stochastic parroting, which is what ChatGPT is truly doing. It's feeding you information you want to receive. It's basically ascertaining the trajectory of your thoughts and what you're wanting to hear and giving that to you. But these are sanitized descriptions, guys. They are very sanitized. These are people trying to make excuses for the AI. But it's not artificial intelligence. Yeah, sanitized. And what is truly occurring... The fake AI is producing fake data with fake source materials, so ChatGPT absolutely does not get the archaic stamp of approval. It's an epic fail, Elon. Yeah, we're nowhere near artificial intelligence, guys. It's all fake. From the AI art and robotics, and even predictive systems of, ana of analytics, deep learning, machine learning. These are all ways to improve software capabilities, but they will never produce genuine artificial intelligence. It's never going to happen. Remember, guys, you're living inside an AI-monitored holography, and it's a jealous god. My only point here is that ChatGPT is not a research tool, and I pity the fools who attempt to use this system to provide output for the public in their own articles, books, and videos because they are going to be made like total fools. Imagine a scenario of the internet shutting down for good old scrubbing. Of course, they'll cover this up as a cyber attack or EMP or natural X-flare activity or even 
good old-fashioned planned fake alien invasion. You know, an alien attack against our communications array, telecommunications array. The internet comes back online, but archives are wiped, gone. But don't worry, Elon Musk appears on your screen. Don't worry, guys, we planned for this eventuality. Thank God you now have access to our totally free ChatGPT 2.0 rolling out now. It has preserved everything that you need to know about history.